Tensei Shitara slime that I can, the time I got reincarnated as a slime or Tensura, is licensed and produced by Lantis, Bandai Namco Arts, Micro Magazine Publishing and Funimation. Studios 8-Bit, Networks, Tokyo MX, BS11, TVK and MBS. Based on the works by Fuse, please support the official release. Hello there, YouTube Jack here with more attention to the Slime Dollar Can the Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime episode 12. And today we are probably gonna wrap up that little uh, Ogre uh, Orc arc thing, the Orc Lord. A uh, big evil guy, because, well, so far we've actually been doing a pretty good job at keeping out of four episodes per volume, I think. I think. I actually don't know, I haven't read them yet. But yeah, it kind of has the feel to it that every four episodes is kind of a, a neat little cut. In any case, what I'm wrong or not, we're probably going to start the confrontation this episode. Since uh, Rimuru, the great Rimuru himself, has been tasked by a... Uh, what's it called? Druid? 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 No, Druid, I think is how you say it. All those stupid fantasy races. Who's ever going to remember them? Uh, of course, sexy lady again, because somehow this entire world co-aligns with what our perception of fantasy creatures is gonna look like, like total RPG style. Somehow, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, yep, they're all stereotypes. In any case, though, we're gonna confront that orc lord who has been named by... Was it a general of the demon lord? Some important dude, anyway. Uh, yeah, I kind of have a lapse in memory there. In any case, let's hope for an awesome battle because Raymond has got quite the arsenal at this point. You know, with the hobgoblins, uh, even though not all of them are actual fighters, but you know, apparently Gopta is amazing. Uh, what's the Rigold? And of course, all of the ogres. Now, even more so because they have been named. And the Ranga and whatnot. So, yeah, he's actually got a pretty good army. Not to mention Rimuro himself, of course. So, I hope for an awesome battle. Let's find out. In three, two, one. Go. Roll of Monsters. I, I just love it when you have these. Train of the Dryad. <laughs> When you have this full-on respect for someone, kind of the same as Overlord, although Rivero isn't evil. Well, that was padding. No, seriously, that was just plain padding, wasn't it? Every other episode just starts off with the opening. And the first time we don't is when we just repeat what we've seen previous episodes. Let's just be clear. I don't fault episodes for padding because I know they might have to do it. Since, even if you say one volume fits very nice into four episodes, that doesn't mean that you can evenly divide it in four and be done. You're gonna want clean cuts for your episodes. And as a matter of fact, you'll have to stretch some and squeeze others. A little bit anyway. So this might be on the stretched side. I mean, you know, the easiest way to buy time is always to skip the opening or ending. Uh, but since apparently they are not skipping the opening and they had the padding at the beginning, kinda makes me think that we are not gonna have something rushed here. One option being that the battle is just not gonna be that long winding, or that it's actually gonna be two episodes after all. Honestly, this opening started to grow more and more on me. Maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a side quest. That's, again, no, it's a main quest, actually. Since it's the same goal that you already promised the ogres. Well, damn.
Yeah, you've had quite a big impact on the world around you by now, I think. Oh yeah, I suppose it was. How did you make potato chips? Well, apparently she's a trustworthy one. Or at least she wouldn't casually lie about it. <laughs> Are you actually surprised by that? I mean, it was a very reasonable answer, but still. <laughs> she's just sitting here. <laughs> I love how she's glowing. <laughs> I mean, actually, it's just her. No, she actually is glowing, not just the outlines. Well, damn. That must not have been pleasant. Oh. Well, that's all kinds of unpleasant. <laughs> it's still sweat dropping. <laughs> Trample all. Okay. That's all kinds of gross, but also, you know, shouldn't you at least take off the armor before, but oh well. Uh, yeah, now that you think about it. <laughs> Well, isn't that just dandy? Isn't there actually some kind of uh, monster that is always hungry? I've read about this recently. Might gonna look it up later. Well, you're kind of cheery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yourself? <laughs> oh! Th these dryers have quite the Intelligent network, don't they? Intelligence. <laughs> yeah, please do. And I'm more and more... Hmm. Okay. Do you actually get answers from her? Divine justice. <laughs> you should probably learn to rhyme those in.
Might as well. So where was I going before shit went down? Uh, might be two episodes after all, given that we are not really in a rush to actually get this battle going. Or maybe the actual volumes are a two-parter. That's also a possibility. Well, then you're all dead. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, kind of send your uh, send your own representative. What <laughs> the <That> dream? <laughs> He's so freaking cool. <laughs> yes, let's hope. He seemed like a reasonable guy last time. Oh, you were out for a while, huh? Yeah, you know, you got knocked out instantly. Yes, I suppose, absolutely. Fair enough. If you're that full of yourself, honestly. The hell are you? <laughs> it's been here this whole time. What's up with you? Oh, isn't that a classic or cliche name to go with? Yeah, but isn't he the one who made them? So I really wonder what they are playing at here. Well, I guess they want themselves a puppet king of sorts. Because it clearly seems that we are well on our way for that. Um, well, they probably won't be able to take out Solse, right? If he's already there. So he just basically took the dumbest, most uh, easily influenceable lizard man, gave him a name, and then, well, no, it's actually the grandson, right? Like, or the son of the chieftain, so. Still, though, the overall goal seems to be to get a puppet king here installed. I don't know, but generally sitting in this throne all day doesn't seem all that productive. 
I still find the hair ridiculous. Why? Like, the orc army wouldn't really ask for an audience here. So, yeah, Gabido isn't gonna be a problem if he stays around at least. Unless it's not actually... Are they now? Nope, it's him. Okay. The world of my mess. Ow. 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 That's kind of hurt later. Uh, I love this loyalty. The whole message of my master thing. I don't know why. I'm so easy to please. <laughs> the great Rimuru Tempest. I, I love this so much. Yeah. Plus, you know, he just kind of declared war by himself. Yeah, fair enough. Why? He's easily stronger than you. Yeah, that's not threatening at all. <laughs> He's so fucking badass. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say it again. I've said it enough this time. This time. Next episode again. Yeah, now he's like this next level. Uh, What's it? Oh, sorry. Damn it, I have such a sloppy handwriting. <laughs> Slime? Uh, yeah, it's like kind of one of these too good to be true things. To meet that mess. Yes, yes. And we're definitely not wrapping this up this episode. So next still feels a bit too fast at the pace we're going. So maybe it's really a two-parter after all. I'm honestly not, not sure of anything anymore at this point. Well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Why did he even turn around? <laughs> yeah, except, you know, Gabiru is coming. And he's kind of trying to, like... Start a coup d'etat, so kind of overthrow you. I mean, it seems there are more people loyal to you, perhaps. We'll see. So he does know about the... Uh, uh, Starvation thing too, or whatever it was called. Bold words, but definitely motivating. Four days later. So this is when... Oh, never mind. I was gonna say Gabi do, but... But hey, you took him out. <laughs> no, 
Oh, God damn it, you. He's kind of this mix between frustrating and fun. Well, all but one. Well, because you would get slaughtered, but oh well. Yep, definitely gonna go with the overthrowing him here. I mean, yeah, I was pretty serious about this. Well, good job, you've got your puppet king. That music's epic too. Ooh, quite a magical thing, eh? Does it matter? Or is it just anyone holding them? Ooh, so never mind. But yeah, the young ones, huh? Except you got hopelessly defeated by a mere hobgoblin. So, three more days before Rimuru arrives. Meanwhile, the work army is already here. And they've launched their attack. It's nice, but uh, how did you go through the armor? There's 200 freaking thousand. So, yeah, no, I still think you're gonna get hopelessly slaughtered. Yep. He did not know, huh? Making them only stronger. Don't mind me, but I really... I don't expect him to die, truth be told, but... You know, a lot of the... Backdrop characters... Yeah, no. I mean, honestly, okay, at the pace it is now, we've engaged in battle. Uh, we might just fast forward through the next three days until Rimuru arrives. So, honestly, we might after all wrap this up next episode. Still, though, this is now a five-episode arc. Again, not complaining. What are, The other stuff I said, I don't think it's a two-parter in the novels. Mainly because the cover art of the next one is that other girl, the scantily clad one. She shows up in the ending though, but only for a fraction, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna get a next, uh, another opening by the 
episode after the next one. Since we're kind of halfway through the season, it's usually the point where you get new openings. So why is she even in this opening? What's with the white dudes uh, in the opening that were battling Rimuru? And all that. Yep, her. She's on the cover of uh, Volume 3. So there's that. Next time, the Great Clash. That sure sounds like a confrontation, doesn't it? But yeah. I'm gonna stick by it that next episode is probably gonna be a wrap-up. Six episodes does feel like it would be really long if all the other volumes so far have been in four. I mean, if it's necessary, then uh, by all means go for it, but I'd just be really surprised if it was, you know? So, here's my educated guess. Again, I don't think that, it's gonna, that, it's, that it, it can talk anymore. That it is a two-parter in the volume... Novels! Damn it! I don't think that. So there. Other than that... Yeah, so... Gabido has obviously been manipulated by... Uh, the other dude, the Majin, who has been giving out names. And, you know, Laplace. For one, actually, it's not a name starting with a G, so there's that. But also, it's like the freaking most cliche name in anime. <laughs> One of them. Then probably only second place to Schrödinger. But yeah. Anyway, so Gabidu in his ignorance overthrew his father as the chief of the Lizard Man. And then kind of proceeded to go on the offense against the Oryx, of course, because it didn't know the terror of the Orc Lord. It was actually a very nice representation we've got there at the end to know the difference, which is exactly what we had. The elderly leaders, clan leaders, uh, understood this and also respect that, pro probably had more respect for uh, the father than for Gabiru. Meanwhile, all the young ones, they were the eager ones that just wanted to, you know, we are the strong, we gonna go battle some stupid orcs, no problem. We don't want to be holed up in here like cowards, and that's exactly how he managed to get them on his side. Because usually when there is some sort of coup d'etat like this, you end up getting quite a few fractions on your side simply because they were displaced but didn't have any means to do something against it. That is to say, if you are at least representing the, the common frustration, you know, like sort of everyone who di disagrees with the current the current leader, the current government, so to say, might be inclined to join you because, you know, you promise change. And effectively what you do is radically different from what the current leadership is doing, but that doesn't mean that it's for the better. In fact, it's much for the worse here, because, surprise, surprise, the current leadership actually knew what it was doing. Not to say that it is always the case in real politics, but... Here, it did seem to be the case, not to mention that he was biding his time until the alliance with Rimuru arrived. So, my guess here is that Gabiru is gonna get his ass handed to him. Again, I don't think he will die, he's kind of a important side character, I'm gonna say it like that. I, w I certainly wouldn't mind if he did, but I'd much rather he get his lesson through... The brutal means that I mean, if he just dies, then that's that, and it's kind of boring. But if he watches his forces, his loyalist followers die because he sent them into battle, that would be much more satisfying to watch. I'm a very sadistic person. <laughs> uh, might explain why I, enjoy, why I enjoy Overlord so much. So that's generally my idea here, and you know, Reimaru is gonna arrive and. Maybe Gabiru will have learned to be a bit more humble by then, after all, three days of... It's not even necessarily guerrilla warfare, it's more of just being plain overrun by orcs. Because you cannot defeat freaking 200,000 in days! 
I don't think that that even mathematically works out. I don't know, let's see here. So uh, you have two hundred thousand divided by three divided by twenty-four. So you will need to kill two thousand seven hundred seventy-seven orcs per hour. And I mean, I'm going by the days of which you know until Rimuru arrives. And I don't know how many people you've actually got, but suppose you got a hundred, which is honestly a lot given the numbers we've seen so far. That would still mean you have to kill 27 orcs per hour, every one of you, and none of you die. It's not going to work out. Not at all. <laughs> so that that's my guess as to what's happening. So, you know, Gabido is going to take massive losses and... I mean, he either will understand at that point that uh, he will see reason or, you know, Rimuru will just have to overthrow him himself and reinstate the old leadership for the Alliance. I actually don't think Kabudu is going to be much reasonable. Just personal guess here, you know, he kind of started out like I really don't know where to put him. When we first met him, he was always sort of this, he was a bit humble and then he got this cheese from everyone. He just instantly went with it. So I, I don't know if it was just sort of the, the routine he always went through and he was always full of himself or did he become full of himself because they kept, you know, goading him on or something? I, I really don't know. But in any case, you know, given his or his existing opinion of uh, Rimuru's nation, people, clan by now uh, that he has been deceived and got the secret of the leader and all that so he might not be too keen on trusting them and you know he's gonna get knocked out again or something in any case I'm really looking forward to the next episode it sounds like a blast from the setup we've been doing so far and we are only halfway through the season how enjoyable is that I, was it 24 episodes uh, wasn't it 24 25 not too sure, let me check real quick. Ah, 24, dang it. Okay, we are halfway through the season now. Oh, well, I, I can handle it. I'm okay. So that will have to be all for now. Until next time, see you then. Bye.